Are we ready? We're ready. All right. Dad jeans. Dad jeans. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Most excellent. Okay. Pack. Pack. Peck. Sorry. Pack. Pack. Uh, uh, is that where the is that where the 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 word peckish comes from? Oh, that's a great question. Where uh, where one feels a little snackish and hungry? Yeah. Because he doesn't have his peck of peppers. Right, because back then, the only thing people snacked on were pecks of peppers or <laughs> exactly pecks of cigarettes. <laughs> Mother, do we have any Do we have any peppers in the house? <laughs> I'm feeling a bit peckish. Was that, uh, that's Danzig, isn't it? Who said yeah. that? <laughs> Mother, <laughs> do you have a peck of pickled peppers for me? <laughs> uh, is it true that Glenn Danzig lives on um, Franklin? In Los Feliz, in the Boo Radley house. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Everyone, when they move to Los Angeles, has an apartment in Los Feliz for a couple of years. You did. I did. I everyone did else I know did. Like that. You go, you drive to LA and you're like, I'm from the East Coast. What's in LA? Oh, this uh, there's a bookstore here. I'll live here. And yeah, so, they, because they it, point you directly towards Franklin Street. Yeah, because it, it leaves you with it. Frank, uh, Los Feliz leaves you with the, with the impression that people read books here. But lo- <laughs> soon you realize people just buy books here. They don't read <laughs> them. Right. And so, but it, so you live in Los Feliz for a while, and then eventually you're like, well, the little village with the movie theater is fine. But what I like is the re rustic inn with its yeah. uh, with its sweaty weight persons and their incredible chicken wings. And when you're walking to the Yee Rustic Inn, you, there's a Boo Radley house. And you look at the Boo Radley house, you start asking around, and eventually people are like, oh, Glenn Danzig lives there. Wow. Um, I don't know I don't know that I know the house that you're talking about. It's quite can you, something. Can you get me a picture? Can we make that the picture for our, this episode? Oh, I the think Boo that's Radley a, house? That's a, <laughs> that's a great idea. Yeah, the Danzig, <laughs> Danzig Radley house. Amazing. Which is also a dormitory at Bryn Mawr. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's where all the uh that's where all the, the fencers live. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that's a preferred nomenclature anymore. <laughs> oh no, sorry. I'm a little behind the times. Um Brendan, happy new year to you. Happy New Year, Jeffrey. It's not twenty twenty uh, anymore. It's not, no, and we thought that was going to be a good thing for all of us, and it turns out, nope, yeah. we're just in in an endless, uh, an endless careening path down the mountain. It's true. It really is oh. true. It's six. It was six days without incident. Hi. Yeah. Recording. Get hey. out of here. Get out of here. I love you. Good morning. <laughs> Beat it. Hello and goodbye. I'll see you later. <laughs> Blue Bear. Is that? Blue? No, what's the name of the bear? Yeah, yep, Blue Bear. Is it? Uh, yeah, okay. Blue Bear. Blue Bear has his own. He's definitely our fourth child. I mean, our second child. He feels like three uh, on his own. I thought you said he, you were going to say he has his own website, or you were going to send us to his Instagram page. Well, that's not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Bear has a lot of personality. He was part of a polar bear crime family. There's this whole sort of backstory that we've built about him. And, uh-huh. uh, and they all had to split up because the cops were looking for him. <laughs> they ran a, casi- oh. a casino for other Arctic animals, and then they had to – it was all dirty and et cetera, et cetera. It's oh, a- how, qu- how quaint. You, yeah. you, you use your imagination with your child. Right. I remember those days. I try. I try to. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll get to this later, but yesterday Oscar turned to me on a hike and said, You are ruining my childhood. <laughs> oh, God. Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's good that he has that insight. He, I'm sure he's he's correct about that. <laughs> Definitely correct. He's early with, to that to that realization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, I'm hoping my my children are like precociously angry as well, and I'm hoping that that means they'll get to the stage of like middle aged uh, depressive acceptance by the time they're about twelve. Oh, see, that's great. Everything's it's maybe it's the preservatives, but everything's ahead of schedule. <laughs> Everything. Well, it's, yeah, L.A., the water, the water here. We can't make bagels, but we can grow children who are insolent. <laughs> and over it. <laughs> and over it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I am Jeffrey Dinsmore. You certainly are. You yes. glorious uh, beast. And what's, do you have a name? or? I do. I'm called Brendan Hughes. Brendan Hughes. Uh, Welcome, Brendan, uh, and to all our all our fencers from Bryn Mawr who are uh, in the fan club. Nice <laughs> in the Danzig nice Rally House. <laughs> in the Danzig Rally House. Um, 
Brendan, did you see uh, me and the boys raised a little bit of a ruckus this week? Oh, you certainly did. I hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> yeah, we, we are proud. We are all very proud boys. <laughs> <laughs> Proud little boys. Did I is it did I see you in a uh, in a big helmet carrying a long gun, which is a term I didn't hear until this week? Yeah, yeah that was me. I that's funny. Someone said on um someone said on on Twitter like they like they have the perfect excuse right now to cover their faces and commit crimes. Exactly. And they refuse to take it. Yeah. How, oh. how bungling the fucking key, Keystone Klux Klan is what we got going over here. <laughs> oh, that's that's even better than Gravy Seals. <laughs> <laughs> or Meal but, Team Six. Yeah, yeah they that, are unbelievable. They wear their, their stupid softball helmets and uh, and right. and, and they're, they're bursting out of their fatigues. Right, right. With their, their jersey with their name on the back. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, they'll never, they'll never catch me, copper. <laughs> Jesus, that thing. I have so many feelings about Wednesday. Do you have yes. as many feelings as I do about Wednesday? Oh, a, a million feelings. So why don't we? We should jump right into Grave New World. Let's I think do our that's first a fine segment. Idea. Okay, okay. Let's go right into our segment. We're all gonna die because it's a grave. new world it's brendan it's whole it's a it's it's a terrible world out there what are you thinking how are you feeling <sighs> okay here's my first thought the right is having their 60s yes i, I totally agree with that i yeah i i you're you're right this is what this is how the the right was feeling in the 60s watching all of these bearded hippies Right. Walking around asking for truth, peace and justice. Right. Right. And the hippies were like, imagine a world without war. And But these guys are like, imagine a world where Hillary Clinton is smeared in pizza and molesting children and drinking their blood. So, yeah, it's a little bit different. A little bit of a disconnect in the messaging, I think. Right. They're having a 60s, but it's, it's this bizarro, ill-informed, magical thinking 60s versus one where it's like, hey, I read Marx in a. A econ class and I thought he might have some interesting ideas. That was yeah. our 60s. Yeah, and and it's it's a bizarre magical thinking uh uh 60s in which they're winning. They're winning everything. Yes. They're at the top of the food chain. They're not being sent to die in fucking a, an unjust war. Like these guys are 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 craving that unjust war themselves. They're like, please yeah. give us give us more unjust just war that you can throw us into. Exactly, and they're they're all plumbers who make one hundred seventy five thousand dollars a year, and their house oh, yeah. costs forty. Their trailer costs forty five thousand dollars, and they like have giant flat screen Fox Newses in their fucking dirty living rooms, and they yeah. think life is unfair, and they eat all the goddamn carbohydrates they want, and they're huge, and they have long guns, and they're like, why does my life suck so much i only make one hundred seventy five thousand dollars a year i hate yeah. these assholes yeah no they're upper middle class like all of these every little literally every person i saw like of note i don't i don't know about the rank and file like i don't i don't know what the 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 overall makeup of that crowd was but i think if you're gonna show up in washington dc uh on a tuesday after a christmas vacation yep uh, then you're probably okay financially. And yeah, exactly. Flew there. And actually, I, I can't think it was. Stayed Anderson in a hotel. A, stayed in a hotel, ate at fucking Olive Garden for every meal. Right. Yeah. And it's just like to load up on breadsticks before the big march because they got yeah. car full before Carvalho, a long yeah. walk. They, uh, they're free. They're free. You can. They have free breadsticks. Yeah. yeah. I, and here's the other thing, Jeff. Yeah. 74 million people in this country are horrendous judges of character. God, so true. So, so true. Like they look at that that putrid craft cheese palpatine and they think that is <laughs> exactly who I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe yeah. every word he says. Yeah, and uh, I I know we've been over this a million times, Brendan, but like I I just his we've we've all known who he ha, has been for 
all, our entire lives. S- this since, guy's been a public figure my entire life. Hey, since his his cameo in Home Alone two, we know we knew who he was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm an old schooler. I go all the way back to Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Oh. I, I recall his yacht. I've spent time on his yacht with Robin Leach, <laughs> but um, I I I I just I I don't know how anyone can think this guy speaks for them. I I guess it's because uh, to me, it's because he is like, they're all losers. They innately feel like losers. Mm -hmm. They're, they're angry because this, this dream of whatever the dream that they have in their head of how life should be in America, they have not captured, even though they're doing just fine. Uh, Like they, they're not, they're not having sex with, with playboy centerfolds so that's so therefore they feel like losers and he just articulates all of their loserliness and that's that's the only thing i can see to identify with in this guy you know what i mean right it's i've heard it said that he is what poor people think are rich people and dumb people think are smart people there you go there yeah yeah i mean yeah and like you if you have you have you watched any of the videos of this this siege, this it's, like... It's absolutely horrible. It's horrible. I can't take yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like the day of, so as it was happening, it was such a surreal day. Like, uh, first of all, this is the biggest thing to happen to our country since 9-11. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. if not our entire lifetimes, Yeah, you know, and we're all in this crazy Zoom world. So I'm talking, I'm, I'm spending part of my like most of my day writing about some you know bullshit tech product and having zoom meetings with clients where we're all just conducting our affairs and not saying anything any not not saying a single thing about everything that's happening on my left side screen which you know i'm wall-eyed the entire day like one eye is on this work i'm bullshit work i'm supposed to be producing and the other eye is on like the the fall fall of our country right right Right. but exactly but there was something that day like i woke up that day and i tweeted something about like how his his revolution is a complete bust and boy was i wrong brendan i am (laughs) i am willing to admit when i'm wrong (laughs) Listeners, if you're not following, I was wrong as fuck on that one. <laughs> well, if you're listeners, if you're not following Jeff on Twitter, uh, his Twitter feed in particular has a way of articulating for you the thoughts that haven't quite yet become thoughts yet in your own head. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. I'm at Jeffrey D. By the way, at Jeffrey, and we are D. we are at Dad Jeans Podcast as well, uh, which I don't know if uh, oh. anything ever comes out of that. <laughs> oh, I think it automatically posts our episodes. I guess if you go to Twitter yeah. for your podcasts. Uh, yeah, if you go, yeah. Like, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're listening to this podcast and you need to know how to get our podcast, <laughs> just, just go to Dad Jeans Podcast. And then don't go, don't forget to go to the record store and graffiti on the wall that you like a particular record. Or, I mean, go to Ooh, iTunes yes. and say you like us on that because it's the exact um, same thing, which there is no actual uh, living IRL corollary for which makes me insane that people have to fucking go and be like i a person approve of this listening material thank you apple you know it's ridiculous i hate all that shit yeah which to my to to what i've so what to what i've seen so far does no one any good either it's just like i mean sure yeah like us why not like i guess yeah like and share like they're never share. yeah they're never gonna put us in the fucking parenting section <laughs> right, exactly uh, <laughs> for some reason i wouldn't uh, put us in the parenting section <laughs> no i'm glad we're not in the parenting fuck section. the parenting tell, section tell, <laughs> fuck the parenting section that's that's our proud boys movement <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna storm the parenting section <laughs> <laughs> take them down <laughs> in that donut shaped headquarters <laughs> yeah exactly uh, what would have happened actually if like if some lefties stormed Apple or something like that, and they were like, bring bring back the, the like, no more dongles or something like that. You know what I mean? Right, bring right. It. Or the iPod. I, I would be yep. I would be committed to a revolution that brought back the music player dedicated iPod. I would I would I would break a window <laughs> just to get the headphone jack back. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> 
I mean, it's all open. It's all open game now, right? You've yeah. got you've got how many people were were in the fucking capital? I mean, are we talking tens of thousands, like hundreds of thousands? Oh. How many people were in D.C. for this thing? Oh, I saw the number thirty thousand rolling around. Is that is that thirty thousand total in the entire city or in the capital? Another good question. I have no idea. Um, I imagine thirty thousand people probably couldn't fit into the capital, so. We'll say thirty thousand people at this thing, at right. this rally, which yeah, actually yeah. is not—it's it, not that many people. It's not that fucking many people. No, no, but they're—they're they're all the worst Americans. But if so, like if you get a concentration of literally the worst people in the United States, all thirty thousand of the worst people ranked yeah. one to thirty thousand, all of them standing there, then yeah. you, you've got a problem on your hands. That is true. Yeah, and I gotta—I mean, so where I was wrong, I think, in this tweet that I sent out is that I honestly. I've been I've been downplaying these people. I've been saying I mean I get that yeah the the that far right like white supremacist terrorism is on the upswing. Like I don't downplay that at all, but you just look at this crowd of losers and you're like these guys can't fucking organize their way out of a paper bag. Like mm-hmm. there's no way that they're going to cause any damage. Like look at all these pussies. That's that's how I was feeling that day. I was like look at these fucking pussies right. with their with their ox hats like they think this is a fucking frat party but the problem is it was a fucking frat party <laughs> it was a frat party it was a yeah it was a to- it was a complete oh sae fr- here's the thing though okay i have some i have a confession yeah. i have a serious confession to make please um Con- i had a confess re- me bro i had a really hard time with the visual of the viking guy because yeah. in any other context uh he's he would seem really fun <laughs> right like if he were a spokesman for your your muffler shop i would yeah exactly i would be like he is the pride of secaucus or wherever that would be <laughs> but this, totally like, he has just on on an aesthetic level i was like shit they have that guy fuck he's like there's a yeah. he su- Don't Party monster he sucks and he's a terrible person uh, sure. And he has horrible ideas, but just like, but his wardrobe, like the wardrobe choices, I was like, we need more of that Belushi energy on our side. Right. Like, but we, then, yeah. We can't no, just totally. be sanctimonious, you know what I mean? Agreed. And the, the, this guy carrying the, the um, carrying the podium out where I'm just like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd hang out on your boat, homie. Like, oh yeah. Like he who's carrot top with less severe eyebrows. Yeah, he's just having a good old time. But I think that's what came out. I think the day of the all of the images we were seeing were these like fun. Oh, they're just going crazy. They got a little out of hand, you know. And now we know uh, it being Sunday, January tenth. We know that this was a planned fucking insurrection. Mm-hmm. The ga- the gallows they set up. Yes, uh, was a functioning gallows. It had a ladder. Oh, it had a fucking ladder. You don't just do a fun like ceremonial gallows with a, and put a ladder on it. Why were they? <laughs> and they wanted to hang Mike Pence. That's the weirdest part. Like they were chanting, "Hang Mike Pence, hang Mike right. Pence." Yes, because it's just there's no uh, the only all it is is Trump. That's all they have. Which yeah. get, gets me back to my other ongoing question: is whether or not Trumpism exists without Trump? Which I. I tend to believe it doesn't. I don't think they're, you're going to get like like any like Ted Cruz, the most fucking flaccid, weenie ass person. Child molester. Ugh. Yes. he He's not going to tap into that Trump energy like he just doesn't. He ain't got it. He ain't no. got it. He tried with machine gun bacon and it didn't work. What was machine gun bacon? <laughs> he did when he was on the campaign trail. He went to a, a firing range with a machine gun and he wrapped the machine gun in raw bacon and just fired the machine gun till it cooked the bacon. And then he oh, said Jesus. to the camera phone, mm, "Machine gun bacon." And then he ate no, it. No, no. <laughs> yeah, oh my god! Really? Person. Then he probably. How picked have his I not nose. seen this? Yeah, he's uh. a, he's just awful. But that didn't take. You know what I mean? And I think uh, yeah. uh, Donald Trump Jr. Jr. also. Uh, won't won't work out because he's just uh so on he has the world's most most punchable face yeah no i none of these trumps are gonna fucking amount to anything no one's got what what their dad has yeah he is i hate to say this a very skilled improviser and comedian yep i'll tell you who i see carrying the torch and no one agrees with me on this uh um 
So feel free to disagree. Feel free to have an anti gras on this one. But um, <laughs> I think Stephen Miller, because what Stephen Miller has is that insane rage that Trump has. He's the only one who truly has it. He's got that loser rage. And I feel like that's what they're that's you, what they're most attracted to. Are you talking about that that corpulent lawyer of his, or are you talking about that the ball the bald um, sort of uh, like the bald fascist I- Ichabod Crane guy? Oh, okay, yeah, that yeah. guy, that guy. I just think like the only way they're gonna go, they're not gonna go, they're not gonna go more. I don't see them going more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not professional. More establishment. I don't think they're going to go more establishment. I think they're going to go more fringe. And this guy, Stephen Miller, uh-huh. I mean, he was he's the brains behind all of it. Like Donald Trump is just like sh- saying whatever someone puts in front of his fucking face. You know, That's it's true. like Unless, I think could be Matt Getz. He's got the. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that guy's a that guy's garbage. He is garbage. Uh, and so but he and and <clears throat> has totally tied himself to the Trump train so that when Trump eats his final cheeseburger, he can, you know, raise his head before the masses and eat his heart or whatever and become him. I don't know how it works with these people. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. You put on the goat pants and you, you, oh, you that guy. ask Bathsheba for we need for we need a clown prince. Something. We can't let them have fun. Like we also have to be fun. That's the problem. Uh, yeah, it, it's true. What is our kind of fun, though? Like, I find AOC to be fun. She's awesome. She's fucking hilarious. But no, people on the right see her as like some like, I don't, I don't even know. Like, they see her as some some prissy something something. But they can't. But they can't argue with how just like perfect a weapon she is. She's so every. She's so witty, and she's so, uh, uh, she's so stinging on Twitter. You know. Yeah. And just murders people, and so and you're right. They just they uh, they abjectly hate her because she, I think she's so smart and she's so sharp, and they can't yeah. they can't they can't step to her. Yeah, she, and she's a minority. She represents everything. Yeah, yeah. That the, they're trying to remove from our country. She's the triumph of the American dream. God damn it. Yeah, that's true. It is true. Yeah, she actually comes from nothing. Yeah. Made everything, Donald Trump made herself everything, and they're like uh, be a, a bartender or whatever. They're like, and then you're like, but aren't you? But about the fucking log cabin, you Republican dickheads. You know what I mean? They're, saying, <laughs> yeah. they're just they don't care about hypocrisy. They're like, yeah, I'm a hypocrite. I'll say whatever is convenient to me right now because right. They, they know that drives us crazy because for some reason we apply the rule of hypocrisy to our to ourselves and them, but they don't apply it to themselves. That's it's so true, and that's my question about this group at the Capitol, like how many of them were fervent believers and how many of them are grifters, grifting grifters, you know? Mm, Right. It's like, like is, is ox Buffalo hat guy. Is he a real, is he, is he, is is he, he's just making a buck off of this. Right. I mean, that's the Trump message is just, just make a buck off of it. Like, yeah. Get the book deal. Yeah. So who's, who among them is following that message and who among them is following the uh, we need to murder all the Jews and blacks so that we can make more fine, young Trumpian me- members right. of society? Yeah, that's a really good question. A lot of money is being made off of this. These swilling lies. That's for goddamn sure. Absolutely. Uh, and one of the most de- delightful developments this week, I thought, was when Josh Hawley lost his book deal because that was a punch right in his fucking nuts. Yes. All these people are just in it for the book deal. McEnany or whatever fucking name is. She's just here for the book deal. The other one before her, all those people, they just want a book deal. Yeah, I know. It's true. And Dancing with the Stars. And and, and, and Dancing with the Stars. I watched a TED Talk from 12 years ago that explained everything that's going on. May I share the nugget with you? Please. Clay Shirky, who wrote Here Comes Everybody, pointed out that... When the um, printing press was invented in the 1400s, it brought about a period of 200 years of chaos where – Wow. Because suddenly it was just, you know, no holds barred. Uh, They uh, they printed all the Bibles and they were like, well, let's print other shit because we can print stuff. Right. And then – 
uh, and 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 the people who decided what would be printed were the printers. So they became kind of like editors and publishers, where they had a piece of machinery, and then they de- evolved into like your Harper Collinses, etc. But um, he said there was two hundred years of total chaos, uh, and then. Uh, the Treaty of Westphalia established the nation state as the next uh, way in which we would um, understand the world or something like that. The new world paradigm was the nation state of the treaty. So it's 200 years. And then he said, OK, so now you have the Internet and the Internet has done the same thing. All journalism has sunk to the cla- to an amateur class. Anyone can publish anything to everyone at any time. <clears throat> and so therefore – it's another printing press. And he said, but don't worry, it won't be 200 years. It will be 50 years. He said, mm-hmm. institutions will collapse and crumble. And uh, people, loosely organized people who can just vaguely connect with one another to accomplish simplistic goals will have an outsized influence on society for 50 years. And that's precisely what wow. QAnon is. And he, predict- he predicted QAnon 10 years ahead of time. Wow. So, okay, question number one, what existed before the nation state? Uh, the church. The church. So I think there were countries, con- but there weren't like, they weren't on par with the Catholic church. It didn't really matter. The church just was, that's what everyone pled their allegiance to. Mm-hmm. You would, you, you would be in, in Austria or, or, you know, whatever, Bangladesh and you would not really consider yourself a Bangladeshi or an Austrian. Right. You would consider yourself a Catholic. Yeah, you were a subject of a monarch and a, and a, a subject of God or whatever. But you were right. And there was no such thing as the individual. The individual wasn't, you know, Jonathan Swift. So I don't know. I don't really understand this, but I read this in, in grad school that Jonathan Swift invented the notion of individuality with Gulliver's Travels somehow. Wow. You're educated. Oh, not really. No, I no, no, no. I have book flaps, <laughs> book flaps in the bookstore. That's it. <laughs> um, OK, so that's interesting because it does. It, I mean, we are we are at some kind of crux in terms of economics. Um, like w- like you're right there. There must be something beyond the nation state. Right. Like we, we must. The next move will be a world will be global. It, it will. It'll or is it the algorithm or a. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, are we headed into an algorithmic state? Is the next? How? What do you mean? Meaning, like on TikTok, people are always saying, we, "I've been, I've got an idea, guys. I've worked the algorithm, and if you do this, this, and this, the algorithm behaves in this way." And so everyone is kind of a slave to the al- to the TikTok algorithm because they're there to make money, and it's a big gold rush on it on TikTok right now. And you and they have to get themselves seen by other people. So so we're uh, coming up now as a generation of people that work the algorithm of your Instagrams and your TikToks, etc. And algorithms, therefore, I think, are becoming our overlords because we are becoming slaves to what they, what the algorithm decides other people want to hear from us. So it hmm. so maybe the individuality is being sucked out, and what's replacing it is a sort of. Um, uh, a fire sale of anything that it might be appealing inside of us or something. But wouldn't we have to, wouldn't there have to be sub genres of algorithm that we would devote ourselves to? Like there isn't just one algorithm, right? It would be like, I'm a, you know, I'm a proud boy or I'm an, I'm an e-girl or like there's, there's some, there's gotta be something that we are like a nation state is something you belong to. Oh, I see. Oh, do yeah. you belong to an algorithm? Like, who's your, oh, what's your organizing what? principle? I guess. Yeah. Right. So, like, or, s- s- thought states. Right. Or if you're saying that the individual, there was no individual before Jonathan Swift, is there some next next level past the individual? Are we moving beyond the individual? Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Exactly. Where you're you're, you're sort of loosely collected into. Um, belief systems that you think are yours at first or start out as yours, but then eventually are guided and honed by the algorithm itself so that you are put into these buckets that no one decides, but everyone decides at the same time. So, right, the Proud Boys, like, yeah, like a lot of people who join the hate groups um, had joined because they were suggested to them by Facebook, by the Facebook Mm -hmm. algorithm. They were like, you might like the proud boys and then you're like click link cuz right. cuz board and then the al- and then the proud boys are like hey come on inside we have 
Charleston shoes that are free or whatever. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we offer you the most horrible life existence ever, which is like they're against having they're against masturbation and they're uh, against having sex with women. They uh, are there. Do you know their ritual for for joining uh, the Proud Boys? No, you have to. Um, Say the names of as many breakfast cereals uh, as you can while the other Proud Boys are kicking your ass. <laughs> oh, are these incels? Did incels become Proud Boys? I, they're, they got to be related somehow, yes. That is just incredible. They're I, These people are garbage. Well, so that's the question, though. It's like, okay, I have a question and then I have an answer to my own question, which is, like the next phase of 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 a human existence, right? Like, which is I'm I'm so glad that that's where this conversation has gone because I'm just so tired of stewing over the horribleness of what happened on Wednesday. <laughs> um, but I, uh, so, uh, where am I saying? Oh, like I'm still of the mind that there is a reality and there is a fantasy. Sorry, I have to get my hand into the shot so that you can see me. Ah, uh, yes, now, now I've got you. Listeners can't. Reality, <laughs> fantasy. Uh-huh. Um, and we are participating in reality, and all of these people at the Capitol were pass- participating in fantasy. Yep. Uh, but if this is all a simulation, then it's all fantasy. Mm-hmm. And perhaps what you're saying about the algorithm is that we are becoming one with the simulation and... There is like fantasy and reality. Like that's the that's the thing that it will go away in the next evolution. Is that there is no, we're just we're just all. It's just all whatever we dream it is. Yeah, there is no truth. There's only your truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, Dis- there, it's there is no reality. Walt Disney's dream has finally become true. Jesus we, H. Christ! It's just all fantasy land. Uh, your your legendary tweet about the idea of there being an island you can go to where <laughs> it's reality on the island instead of fan- yeah. reality island is instead of fantasy the island. most ingenious thing I've ever heard where Ricardo Montalban can be like, there is no Fox News on yeah. this island. <laughs> you know oh, I mean? God, that would be amazing. Everyone here agrees that uh that you know the economy is unfair or whatever or whatever it yeah. is you know uh, yeah god that you, would be yeah you want to you want to cut a glass of orange juice you, you go to a store and you buy it yeah that's what happens on reality <laughs> <laughs> right yeah exactly it, it isn't pooped out by melania trump or something like that which i think they also must believe I think yeah, I believe she poops orange juice. I think that's I've read that in the the R slash Donald. <laughs> All right. Oh God. I know. That is the other problem is that the the those people are so are, are in a reinforced echo chamber bubble. And they have been for a right. lot for decades, but now it only gets tighter and tighter and more airtight, you know? So that sure. now they uh, and they're taught to be allergic to anything that resembles the truth. And there and then it is again reinforced by your Ted Cruz's and Josh Hawley's of the world. So once they hear they are senators talking about this stuff, then it it, it becomes in, in irrefutable to them, you know? Sure. So then But but instantly, but no, but okay, but still, but there is some like, yes, but the second Josh Howley, I mean, we saw with Mike fucking Pence, the second they do anything that goes outside of the dogma, they are now deep state. They are now the villain. They are now must yeah. be killed. Yeah, right. So it's not, what are they, what are they pledging allegiance to? I guess ultimately I think they're anarchists, but they haven't named themselves that yet. You think that's it? Nihilists, right? Yeah, anarcho nihilists. Yeah, yeah. And that was they, a great, uh, yeah, that was a great season of Narcos, the one about the <laughs> anarcho anarcho nihilists, right? That mostly just like read, uh, played Magic the Gathering and uh, yeah. read poetry to each other, right? <laughs> I don't. I mean, also, are we? Go- is that the future where we end up? They win, and we end up going back to some sort of feudal society with like shit farmers. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, the, it's, warlords, you know, what I mean, like it just starts looking right. Like, uh, yeah. Like Mad Max. Yeah, exactly. 
Maybe they just they just want the apocalypse. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know what they what they want. Like the, I I just there's a video I watched yesterday where this guy's like is like I, I always I love like videos of guys with southern accents who are super liberal. Like <laughs> that that is my fucking sweet point. Like that's the algorithm that I think I would be aspiring toward. <laughs> just watching guys who are like what the living fuck are you motherfuckers doing? You know? <laughs> yes. What the fuck? So, yeah, so I watched this video yesterday of this guy, and he's like, what do you want? What What the fuck do you want? What do you want? You have everything. Like, oh, just like great. screaming at these guys. And I'm just like, yes, yes, please. Some Just keep saying that. What yes. the fuck do you want? Oh, that is fabulous. Whenever the votes come in, I'm always heartened by the fact that Kentucky, they're still, I'm, I look and I'm like, okay, there are 40,000 Democrats in Kentucky. Okay. Uh, there are 40,000 of them. That's at least, <laughs> there, at least there aren't zero. That's more than we're in Washington, than Republicans were in Washington, D.C. If all of the Kentucky Democrats had gone, right. this never would have happened. It's on you, <laughs> Kentucky Democrats. <laughs> As is Mitch McConnell, who polls at 18 percent. I don't want to I don't want to out conspiracy these assholes, but Mitch McConnell polls at 18 percent and then wins in a landslide every time. Yes. In the Democratic leaning counties. It's a fucking bullshit. Yeah, that right. is that is I'm. I'm with you, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, Brendan. <laughs> Is that they have conspiracies with no evidence, and yep. we've been listening to them. We've been hearing them out for fucking several months. They've had plenty of their day in court. We have conspiracies that are that are backed by reams of evidence, and we're considered lunatics if we entertain them. Yes. Yes, amen. Because it's so because it's I know you are, but what am I? It's the it's the Republicans. Uh, a con a an accusation equals a confession. If they accuse it, it's because they did it. Yes, or are doing it exactly. So, yes, follow the projection. Fo yeah, the G the P and GOP is for projection. Yep, yep. You're absolutely right. Uh, wait. Did we name this article bigger than a half sister or this episode bigger than a half sister already? <laughs> no. I oh, no. That was from this lost episode, I think. The famous lost episode. The Ladies lost and gentlemen, Damn it. we forgot to tell you. So, OK, let's 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 can can let's should we wrap up this stupid? Oh, yes. 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 These motherfuckers who are destroying our democracy. I don't know the answer. Probably some a, a nuclear bomb will have dead leavened. Leavened? Yes. Leveled, yes. No, uh, it is leavened. It's definitely leavened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. The the anarcho nihilist Jews are going to <laughs> leaven all our bread. <laughs> At atomically. Or no, unleavened. Yeah, yeah, I almost said exactly. anatomically, but I guess that could work too. <laughs> <laughs> what what about that? A, a bread unleavening bomb? Maybe that's what we need. I don't well, know. only yeah, at a certain time of year, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, but okay, so we we did an episode, um, which we fully recorded, and I effed up, and I only recorded one. I recorded using these really horrible speakers. It it was just a mess. So, Brandon, I think you took the time to stitch that entire episode together. Mm -hmm. uh, I did. Which God God bless you. Yeah. Because it was just a, a mess. Oh right, because I also hit stop during the during one of the segments. So oh right, we only, yeah. We only had you talking for one second. The whole thing was an absolute disaster. But the, but in our defense, it was only our hundred and twenty seventh try. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Got to got to break a few eggs if you want to get this omelet started. <laughs> Exactly. But that, that that's what's keeping us out of the parenting section of iTunes, man. It's that kind of shit. I know, right, where we'll do an entire episode. I thought that was one of our best episodes, too, and it just, like, gets It was lost. great. It's gone. It was so sad. So sad. So sad. May, if we ever start a Patreon, we'll we'll put that episode Oh, yeah, on. put all of our lost shitty episodes, like, shittily recorded yeah. episodes on it. <laughs> yeah, you can hear all the garbage recordings. Well, it's like when people in podcasts do Patreons, and they're like, listen to our special live recording. And it's like, your live recordings are always terrible. Like, Oh, yeah, yeah. Just just go back to the to the real thing. And who, I mean, maybe we'll someday start a Patreon. I'm not sure why we would. I guess because we do pay for this thing, and it costs us, like, a couple hundred bucks a year or whatever. But uh, I would say... 
to the people on the Patreon, like, you know, if you want, if you join our Patreon, you can watch us record. So, like, we would record this thing where, you, where you're in your window and I'm in my window. So you get to watch. Yeah. But who in the fudge is no. like, the new dad jeans is here, plunks down on the couch to, t- to look at our fucking mugs, look at, yeah. you know, not even make an eye contact with each other because we have to look nope. at each other's face below the camera. I don't understand. I, I just don't understand. We'll have to come up with other Disaster. things like pot holders or whatever if we do Patreon. I'll- I'll tell you what. Yeah, we should we should print our uh, print our T-shirts. We've got a couple of sayings, right? Like, oh, yeah, we print our T-shirts, yep. join at the, the you know, ten dollar a month subscriber le- level. You'll get a T-shirt. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. Right. Something like Why that. not? I Cost that's, us that's fucking nothing. Idea. Oh, um, let's get T-shirts. What? And we could also sell T-shirts in our merch store if we have some sort of online presence, which I'm not, you know, I will have to look back, look back into that. Yeah. I we don't think we do anymore. Uh, if we actually, man, oh man, if we put the time necessary in, if we could scare it up, we're both such busy dudes, but if we could scare it up or if we could yeah. hire some kid who's a whiz kid. Hire shit, some kid. Yes. Let's oh, go. The, the tech savvy unkempt youth or whatever. We could, the unke- we could take over the world with the unkempt youth. <sighs> okay. Anyway. So <laughs> we fucked up an episode. <laughs> and then, Brendan, we need to talk to you more. And we need to have, okay, uh, speaking of Patreon, Michaela Balot called again. And I don't have the call handy. So unfortunately, I, we can't put it on this episode. Oh, Apologies, shit. It was Michaela. a wonderful call. It'll come back. <laughs> yeah. She, yeah, exactly. She's, uh, she's, she's out there keeping us going um, with her words of encouragement. But um, she uh, uh, said, uh, yeah, that she would subscribe to our Patreon. But also, um, speaking of Michaela Block and you, Michaela, who we have to have on because she has Meniere's disease. Oh yes, I've heard you've had some rough go of it, Brendan. I've had a rough go. I'm trying to. I've had. Let's see. Since May, how many months? Since May, eight months, seven, eight months. I've had. Uh, I've been in medical hell for a long time. And okay. you hear about like people before this happened to me. I would. I would hear about people even with allergies. Here's the thing. That could be self loathing because I had horrendous cat allergies when I was a kid, um, and. Now I have a chronic disease, and I remember before I remember thinking to myself, allergies. Do they really exist? <laughs> Even right. though I had one, you know, what I mean, I was like, wasn't it psychological? And then I was like, chronic sure. illness. Isn't that just people are just really stressed out and it's manifesting physically? And sure. I, and I'm here to tell you, maybe it, that actually still might be true. This could be psychological, but uh, I think good, mani- good for you for entertaining that. Yeah. I, I, I approve of that, the entertaining that message, but it doesn't fucking matter when you're going through it. When you're going through it, you're right, because the symptoms of this are fucking horrible. So uh, ugh, uh, it's awful. Yeah. So we were supposed to record last week and I had an attack. And so I was in bed. Um, well, and I and what does that mean? Uh, a Meniere's attack? What, oh, what happens? It, it's horrible. It's like being on a crashing airplane. Suddenly uh, <clears throat> you can't you can't open both eyes because if you do, the world starts spinning. Have you ever. Oh, Jesus. Have you ever drunk so much that you have the spins? Uh, I, yes, I'm sure I have. And you have to put one where you're laying in bed. You have to put one foot on the floor to stop the world spinning. Yeah. Uh, I, I I before I, before I started blacking out, that was, that, that was the solution is just black out through all that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I've had the spins (laughs) on. It's basically like the spins. Your, um, your brain, cause, because one of my, the, one of my vestibular organs, which gives you balance shuts down so that Mm. you have two, you have two, these two little organs that tell your brain which way is up. But one of mine goes offline for like two hours. And so my brain freaks out and it can't figure out which way is up. And so Ooh. I can't I can't even walk like it, it's like if I stand up, I fall, I fall over, I fall on the ground. And if I walk Jesus. anywhere, I crash into the walls and it, oh. and it. But it's all but not only that, like that sounds like kids love being dizzy. It's also unbelievably sickening. And I get these mm. like nauseous, really nauseous. And I have to chug Pepto-Bismol or I start puking. Like it's oh, Jesus. It is awful. And so and so that's one half. The other half is the is this like raging tinnitus where uh, my uh, there, it's like cicadas. It sounds exactly like a field full of cicadas, but they're screaming uh-huh. at the top of their lungs, and they're inside my head, <laughs> on the left side. So, uh, and as the, the more they scream, the more my hearing goes away. This is why Michaela has hearing aids, and this is why I will eventually have hearing aids too. Is because it takes away, it slowly takes away your hearing. Um, oh, it's awful. It's a terrible disease, and so I have these attacks once, uh, once every week to ten days. And then it oh takes like three days to recover. Like I feel crappy and hung over for three days afterwards. So it takes a huge chunk. A lot of people on this disease end up on um, disability 
because you can't have a job. Like I can't, I would be out once a week, you know? Wow. So, so it's fucked up. It's a fucked up but, situation. But so, but the, the hearing aids don't do anything. They just uh, affect the hearing. There, Like there's no procedure you can do to your inner ear or anything like that. Oh, for people who, like in England, they don't let people drive if they have Meniere's disease. Like I, if I lived in England, I wouldn't have a license anymore um, because you have these, atta- these things can suddenly come upon you and you can't see straight, you can't think straight. And so- uh, Jesus. One of the things that they will do in emergency situations where you have to wear a helmet because you like you walk down the street and then you fall down into the street. I I don't have it that bad. Like I I get a an aura and I can I know it's coming. I have like a head start of like four out. I know four hours ahead of time that it's going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. So I can like get near a bed, you know, but uh, people they'll remove one of your vestibular organs, but with it, like make you completely deaf in one ear. And then your brain and then you have the worst attack of your life while your brain gets used to having only one of them because that's what the attack is. It only has one. So then it's just a permanent attack. But then your brain eventually kind of figures it out, I guess. And so then you're deaf in one ear, but you don't fall down and puke anymore. Oh, the only deaf in one ear. That's 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 good. I know. I mean, it might be might, I'm already basically that like Oscar comes and whispers. If he whispers in my left ear, I can't hear what he's saying. So he has to go around and whisper in my right ear. So it's already a lot. My left ear is already a lost cause anyway. So wow. maybe I uh, so that could be the answer is eventually well, if it gets that if it gets really bad. Can I ask in relation to the, the stress factor is the. Is there any danger, like I think with with chronic with any kind of chronic illness, like like I, I know migraines, for example, like or I or people with back pain, like the anxiety that you might have an attack of this is in itself like paralyzing Abs- in its yeah, own way. Absolutely, that yeah, you they put your f- finger right on the uh, the nugget uh, because uh-huh. r- finger right on the nipple because. Uh, <laughs> That that fear, I have lived a lot since May in fear of having my next, like I had a really long stretch of deep fear of my next attack and any little sort of wispy twitch in my brain feels like it might be the next one and they're, because they were so awful. And I actually, it actually, there's a moment where, I don't know what I would call this, it broke my spirit or something like that, where I suddenly, uh, maybe two months ago, my brain switched into something where I was like, I can't let this bother me anymore. Like the attacks are what they are and I have to get on with my life and I can't live with that anxiety because it was encompassing literally all day, every day. And I just have become less of a parent, less of a husband, less of and everything because mm-hmm. I'm so consumed by that, that exact anxiety. So two months ago, I was like, fuck it. And I will have attacks and I have to get back to my life because it was, it was too much. Wow. Anger bargaining, denial, depression, acceptance. Precisely. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. So I have less uh, bargaining and I'm in denial. That's den- So that's denial, basically. I was like, fuck this. Right. Right. Well, you, OK. Wait. Oh, so you haven't gone through depression yet? Nope. Nope. I fended it off. I gave myself 10 seconds. This is, yeah. I mean, this is it's awful. And I gave myself 10 seconds to to indulge the despair uh, of this, of like having a disease, an un- incurable disease. I want to say two and a half months ago, I was picking something up off the floor in the living room and uh, I was down on the floor on my knees, kind of prostrate, you know? And I was like, yeah. hmm, I think I'll stay in this position for 10 whole seconds and feel the entire sadness of this problem wow. I now have. And I did. And then I was like, well, I'm never doing that again. And I stood up and I tried <laughs> and I like got on with my day. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, that's good. That's it's like a like self guided meditation, and it's in a way, yeah, for yeah. ten seconds. Oh, thank um, you, thank you for asking. It's very uh, therapeutic to even talk about, and I appreciate it. Well, it's I'm I'm saddened to hear of all the pain you're going through, and uh, I I wish that I could I wish I could hold you in my hands and steady your 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 brain. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> with my love quite lovely. Yeah. So next time, next time you call, next time you need something, I'll come over with my, with my ear prods and I'll <laughs> Jimmy open your ear and canal and oh, I just get you feeling right again. Brain massage. I know. And after all this, I'm like, is this just psychological? Am I doing this myself? Does this actually exist? What am sure. I, what am I really doing to myself? You know, et cetera. Et cetera. I mean. I think it's it's like I do. We've had this discussion on dad jeans before in that like uh, it's 
Uh, do you know um, Dr. Sarno? Have you ever heard of him? No. So this is a guy who's very, he wrote a book called The Mind-Body Connection. Oh, sure. Which is all about this principle. And uh, Sarah was, um, Sarah got into it because her roommate had crippling back pain. And she read this book and it her back pain went away. She's never had back pain again since reading this book. Whoa. So Sarah's a huge proselytizer for this. Um, but it's. I think like people mis misconstrue the the idea of like the mind body connection in that your mind is the most powerful organ in your body is that's the reality and it's not like it's all in your head like if you just say if you just say stop then your brain will stop no it's that these stresses within your body manifest themselves physically you know mm -hmm. these stresses that are put upon you by the world. It's not like, it's not like you're, you're making something up. It's that your body, it, it, like your brain has control over all of your organs and there are inputs that it can get that can cause negative reactions. Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that, but it's a heady, it's a heady concept. And, and like any time I've ever had any kind of pain or illness, I'm just like, fuck that. Like, no, I'm sick. <laughs> 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 right, right. Because you do eventually get better. I think, yeah, it, I wonder if it's when it's relentless that it starts to demand a level of um, get, hijacking. Yeah. Well, uh, worth, I mean, worth checking out the book I, anyway. I oh don't my know God, if I'll it, totally check that out. I've been um, needing something like that. I've been on a, 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 a serious amount of drugs since May. Oh, none like psychotropic, like I'm fine, but I just like take tons of pills every day in trying to uh -huh. find the right doses of this and that and there's all this experimental shit this i had to, my friends went to mexico and i and i sent them with a prescription <clears throat> because i have to get these pills made and they cost and they saved they spent a hundred dollars in Me mexico that would have cost me a thousand dollars here wow uh, and so now i have to go to mexico every couple months to get hit a pharmacia etc cetera, etc cetera. but is any of it working or not i don't know you know like it, right yeah, still have how do you know yeah so, yeah, it's and, and I sort of feel like once one of these things starts happening, then another starts happening and another like eventually you're just a person who's riddled with medical stuff. And so sure. I don't want to be that person. I almost want to get back off of these drugs and just sort of bear back this shit because otherwise another one. I, I just have this weird feeling that if you start taking a bunch of pills every day, then you'll have to take more pills for more shit. And you, you're right. just, it's like getting a prison number on you and you're in the system now. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I've always felt about like anxiety medicine, where I'm just like, like I deal with anxiety, but I'm just like, it's never been crippling. Like it's fine. I'll mm -hmm. just, I'll just live with it because you start, you start going down that road, and it feels pretty good until the crash happens. Yeah, yeah. And I was then on. You're like, yeah, yeah. I'll admit it right now. I was on Lexapro for two years after Oscar was born because I kept imagining him like being dead when I walked into his room. Oof. And so I. So, and the, and they got me through a thing, and then I sort of got off of them. I titrated off of them. So you can do that. You can do well. You can. It took I took eight months to do it, cutting the pills like in third thirds halves, and then I was eventually uh -huh. putting like dust on my tongue because I did it cold turkey once, and I had a total episode. That's the problem is that if you wow. if you just stop taking them, you all this sh your brain chemistry goes kablooey, you know. So you have oh, to Jesus. You just have to titrate everything. Titrate. Always titrate everything. Always titrate everything. <laughs> that that could be a, that could be a t-shirt. <laughs> Always titrate everything. Right, and we need a certainty t-shirt also. I feel like. Yes, absolutely. A against certainty. Yeah. Um, I'm uh into it. Shall we go into our next section segment? Um, Antigra. Oh, let's go into Antigra. You like this shit? Antigra, we're over it. Antigrow! You're all the same! Antigrow! We're against the grain! Antigrow! So this is a segment that was introduced in our previous episode. Um, shit, shit, wait, which... wait, wait. Sorry, I hit a marker. Hold on. Don't move. Yep. Okay, okay, still recording. I got, we're this. On. I got the spinning beach ball. All right, we're Oh, fine. Jesus. Okay, good. Um, yeah, we're, we're fine on my end as well. Okay. So, uh, Antigrow an is sort yes. of like foie gras. <laughs> <laughs> it's a version of it's in in that it's outlawed in france <laughs> or no it's sorry that, legal in france outlawed yeah. in it's like anti-matter uh, is to yeah. matter and exactly is to foie gras 
Um, this is yeah. This is this is a, an oddly named segment, but it's it's become one of my favorites. <laughs> um, that we introduced last week in our famous lost episode. Uh, against we are a- against the grain. These are pe- we are anti gras. Um, this is <laughs> opinions of ours that are not uh, popular. Yes, um, uh, Jeffrey. What? Well, do yes. you have an, an unpopular opinion that you'd like to share with us? I do have an unpopular opinion, and that is I fucking hate Taylor Swift. Oh, bring it. I just do not get her appeal. I feel like she's like, and I and I feel like now at this point in Taylor Swift's career, I'm the guy who in the 80s would be like, yeah, the Beatles were a bunch of teeny boppers. <laughs> like I'm, you know, like I'm still like, I'm still like, I haven't recognized her maturity, her growth mm-hmm. uh, that she's done as an artist because I just don't fucking buy it. I think she's a lizard person. I think she's a weird alien. I don't think she, I listened to her, her. She has two new albums, right? That both came out this year and they were done with the guy from the national. Like he produced these albums. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you know the national, they're a long running like indie rock band. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know of these um, people. They, they're well-respected college rock, I guess you would say, the last vestiges of college rock as yeah. it occurs in our world today. Um, and it just sounds like someone pretending, like she's got all the tools at her disposal to make a serious album, but it just doesn't, it just feels like play acting to me. Like, yeah, I just don't, I don't know who she is. I don't know what she is. You have actual intimate experience with her, right? Because Emily worked with her. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I, 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 my experience is not uh, as intimate as Emily's in that um, I, uh, I did. I actually, we went to New York while she was shooting once, and she was releasing the album on which she appears with the guy from Panic at the Disco. Um, right, singing, me, with a song called Me. Me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which um, is just the ultimate Taylor Swift song. It is the Right, exactly. It is the ultimate. Right, right. Uh but there's some catch to it because she was working with uh, Mark Ronson or um, Don Johnson or whoever the fuck, you know, yeah. that guy. So, sure. uh, <clears throat> so uh, anyway, we so we saw tons of her fans. Um, she was there was a big release. And sort of we got to know her fans. And Emily is this is true when she worked on the Lady Gaga thing. Also, she had this um, she developed this real adoration for the fans of these two ladies because mm-hmm. they are um, the, she found them to be kind of lovable losers, like the the dejected, mm. the cast aside, the people who are uh, whose parents would never understand their uh, sexual orientation. Um, sure. Because it's Proud against boys. God and all that kind of stuff. So in so, so Emily's. Yeah. So Emily's <laughs> perspective on it is the joy that these two ladies bring to the the outcasts of the world. Um, right. Uh, so uh, so that was that was kind of. And she said of Taylor herself that she's like a neurotic bubbly wants to make sure everyone's OK. That's what she said. That was her description. OK. Well, I mean, that's better than being a uh stone cold like ice queen i guess yes right yeah the impression i got is that she is anything but that huh um that's fine that's fine (laughs) i mean i'm sure but it's just like it's the same phenomenon it's like again back to the algorithms like these people are in the taylor swift algorithm and it's just like right i just i just don't see anything I just don't feel like she has a unique voice. I mean, yeah, lots of her songs are catchy. I'm not going to deny that. But I, I, it just doesn't seem like it's – there's no ground. that I don't know what ground she's standing on. Uh-huh. It just feels like a like I, like you could, you could have created like a bot that is Taylor Swift and would be doing the same thing. I it's, just don't yeah. – but she's become like these last two albums – all the critics are like, oh, she's she's grown into her own. And they're seeing an evolving, developing person because that's the that's the the storyline. That's the narrative arc that we have to fulfill. Right. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Like it, that's like saying when Mark Ruffalo took on the Incredible Hulk, he really evolved into his true actor being or something like that. <laughs> it's just corporate pop. It's just like corporate. It's corporate right. media, and they're trying to uh, they're trying to project some sort of narrative onto it about the sort of the human bot that once was a, a scrappy artist and is now a brand and a machine. Yeah, right, right. And it just has to like, oh, she's she's 
finally like showing her age and she's she's reflecting and but then you listen to her lyrics and they're still just like i kissed a boy <laughs> and he ran away and i was sad <laughs> Right. Well, this gets to the KLM thing uh, book. You you brought up the KLM yes. book uh, where KLF. they wrote the thing. KLF, sorry, KLF. Yeah. Uh, and they and so I hunted down the actual book they wrote, which is actually very hard to find, but it's on yeah. archive.org, dot uh, of Amazing. how to actually produce a, a pop a number one pop hit. And the, you know the how it's how Chumbawamba wrote Tub Thumping, and as you said, etc. Uh-huh. And if you follow their step by step process, and it's pretty funny too. Like they're and they they come up with they're just like come up with some repeatable phrase that we've all heard but hasn't been used yet, and uh, so and it and loosely attach it to some sort of cultural phenomena like breakups or things right. that we, you know what I mean like stay as universal as possible. Uh, and the art form is be extremely universal about the phenomena you are barely touching upon and and like have an interplay of consonants and vowels that someone wants to say twice and then oh. and then let the engineer do the rest in the studio. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> like hire a studio, go in with kind of a loose idea. And then the guy, the kid who's at the board will have a bunch of ideas because he's the expert. And then just be like, oh, OK, so the groove should be what? Oh, OK, great. And then you let you make the kid at the board actually write it. <laughs> Amazing. And, and I think I think a modern day analogy would be that it, it would have to be like picture it being played at a sporting event. Yeah, right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, that is pretty. That is uh, fascinating. Uh, yes, I I've never been received the gift of Taylor Swift either. Like I've always been like I think she sings about like she goes and dates boy, guys that we've heard of, and then she writes an album right. about them. And she's that seems to be the the industrial complex is she dates them and then she writes an album and then she right. dates another one and writes an album about him. And so like you're like you read this year about who she's dating so that and then next year you can't wait for the album to come out. To hear what yeah, what exactly. <laughs> Which is kind of yeah. brilliant in a way. I mean, it's it's fodder, I guess, but it just feels like the like the way that the way that that she discusses these topics and I get it, it's 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 pop music, like who cares about the lyrics, but it's just like there is something so like non like I just don't feel like there's a lot of art to how she discusses them. They're just like it's very um it feels very pedantic. She's she's just like it's just like reading her diary to us. It and it feels just like but it also feels like it's also it's very like like I know the the personal is the universal, as you've said many times, which uh I think is is such good advice, but her personal is like like just about her (laughs) (laughs) somehow like it like to write a song called me and the 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 chorus is me 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 (laughs) (laughs) me 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 (laughs) it's just that that it just feels so like i just don't know what she offers i don't know i I guess um, People I, see, and I and I watched her her concert video as well, and it just seemed like was that the, that wasn't the thing Emily worked on, was it the concert? Uh, she shot a bunch of concerts. I don't. Know, she she uh, Emily worked on the documentary that was about her, uh, Miss Americana. Okay, so there was a dot. There was a, a video as well about um about or a, a like a live concert. A whatever performance oh i see yeah, that yeah. they recorded and it just felt so rehearsed and everything out of her mouth like that didn't feel like there was a genuine moment in it i there's this I, there's a sense that maybe she is sort of i mean she got famous really young you know and sure. i have heard it said that when you get famous you freeze in time like that's it you stop maturing uh, sure. I don't want to say anything That's... about her maturity per se, but uh, I will say that it does freeze certain things in place in terms of your ability to kind of, I oh, I think, let's say this, it takes you, you stop taking your lumps at that point, you know, you take yeah. different yeah. kinds of lumps, but not lumps that make you grow. You take lumps that make you rich, you know what I mean? Right. And so therefore, uh, I wonder, I wonder if um, she is sort of a, there's an amber, uh, there's a, there's an amber surrounding her. I don't know. Who knows? Well, I will say this also. Emily said that the dude from Panic at the Disco is like the most winning human being on the face of the earth. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I believe that. He, he looks like a, a jocular fella. He's got the he's got a voice like I've never heard on a on a dude. 
I don't know that I've ever heard any of their songs except for his me 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 song. Right. His... I don't like most of their stuff, and I think they're are they are they what emo is? Is that emo? I don't know. I don't know what emo is, but it's like the, pop emo, yeah, pop emo. Uh, but he has uh, a, uh, an unbelievable set of pipes. I'll tell you that much. I'll I'll believe it. Um, Brendan, do you have an anti gras? Are you against the grain on anything? I I'm a little bit against the grain. We were talking about this um, yesterday on a hike, uh, Emily and I and Oscar, um, where we were talking about. Did you see the fight that almost broke out in the house at 3 a.m.? On no Wednesday night. So there was no. this, there was this young Democrat kid uh, from Pennsylvania who was putting it to them straight to the Republicans, and he was like, "This attack happened because of the same lies you've been hearing all night from the other side of the aisle." And he called it called them out, and he was like, "You guys are <sighs> lying." And I want to watch it. Oh my God, who is it? It's great. It's it's this kid. I've never heard of him before. His, his name is like Colin Swift or something like that. Um, okay. And or, or Ricky Swab. He has his name of like a 50s heartthrob. Um, and he's uh, and he's like he's probably 31 or something. And he's just this like uh, bushy tailed little uh, fella. And he, he was like not having it. And it was awesome. And immediately uh, the fuckheads from the other side started being like, <laughs> I started interrupting him and yelling. And so and then he and he turned to them and there's a point like one of them was like wagging his fist at him. And he uh-huh. was hit, he was at the podium and he turned and he looked at them, did not show an ounce of fear. And mm. then the guy, the Republican, I can't remember his name. He was one of the one of the assholes who interrupted Nancy Pelosi in the beginning and was like, how are we supposed to object if we're in the gallery? That guy. Um, and he's okay. one of these Trump dum-dum zombies. Anyway, and he starts walking towards him. So our, our young man, our hero, starts, oh, are we going to have a fight? Walking right towards the guy and not backing oh down at all, you know? And then everyone got, stood up and moved towards the center of the aisle. I'm surprised it wasn't bigger news. And it was like they came face to face and they almost like started swinging punches. And I'm like, that's oh my, my kind, that is my kind of Congress. You know what I mean? Like that is definitely the teacup versus the saucer. And yes. Uh, and then they and then they calm down and Pelosi, it's 3 a.m. and she's 90, 100 years old or whatever. She's like, bang, bang, bang with the gavel. Guys. Order. <laughs> Order. Order. The, the, Order. Ge- the gentleman, the gentleman will not swing with Mary Fisticuffs. Bang, bang. <laughs> and uh, and uh, anyway, so I watch that. And then he comes back to his thing and he doesn't back down and he keeps going. There's this old uh, footage of Anthony Weiner. Which was great, where he said, um, every Republican congressman I know is a wholly owned subsidiary of the insurance industry. Bang, 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 all these objections, and he gets censured or whatever. And he's like, the gentleman will correct his turn, blah, blah, blah. And he gets like, they go through the parliamentary stuff where he said something that insulted the other side and he's not supposed to. And so he's like, all right, let me correct that. Every Republican I know is a wholly owned subsidiary of the insurance industry. Yes. Bang, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So it's great, right? And yeah. um, anyway, I guess we were watching, we were talking on the on this hike, Emily and I, about kind of there's toxic, there is toxic masculinity in the world, and sure. you, lots of it, lots of it, and you're never going, and you can't. Every time I've been, I have been like mugged, as I've told on the on the air, I got hit the pipe. I've been like punched in the face. Like I've I've been in a lot of um, f- scrap scrapes physically. Okay, uh, on the mean streets of Dorchester, and yeah, you're from dot. You're you're a chesty. Yeah, no, a dor- or a dot, what? dot dot rat is what it is. Dot how rat. Refer. That's right. <laughs> and uh, I was always terrified and ran away, but you can't do that sometimes you know right like right you can't you can't be like i choose peace no thank you yeah you know sometimes in the face of toxic masculinity which definitely exists you have to you can't seem scared which i have always historically done you have to Mm -hmm. sometimes stand up and be like what take a punch it doesn't actually hurt that bad to be punched and so some and you kind of can't be afraid of it and you have to and you and you have to demonstrate that you're not afraid of it because the other guy will never actually probably punch you and if he does it won't hurt that much and sometimes if he does you and if you have a bully that's bothering you every day one fucking blast to the face to the nose he never bothers you again and so sometimes Mm -hmm. like there are bullies and they want to be punched in the face because they're little mini like sex freaks and that's what they want. <laughs> and so you have to you have to give it to them and then they stop and then you somehow earn their stupid fucking worthless respect or whatever. But I guess my my anti-gras against the grain thing is like sometimes 
you got sometimes like with a bully, you can't be like educate them out of it and be like, with I I declare peace and I'm a pacifist. You actually have to sometimes punch a bully in the fucking face. Uh, I think that's accurate, and and it's because the only thing they respond to is force, like, right? And you have to, and the, we can't be afraid of it. Yeah, that's the fucking problem. It's like the like these these proud boys. If someone spanked their asses, they'd be like, they'd finally be done with this shit. You know, they just need daddy to spank their fucking asses. Yeah, Donald yeah. Trump needs someone to punch him in the goddamn nose, and he'll <laughs> run away crying. Exactly. Do you remember when the cops and during the BLM protests were firing the canisters right at like reporters' faces and blinding yes. the reporter, and then they were yes. like, and they were taking their shields and smashing people in the heads but they only yeah. did it that but cops are like 90 percent infiltrated by white nationalists at this point but so the, and there's all these investigations of course now uh into the capitol police for the same reasons etc but where was right. that energy when th- the blm protesters were peaceful and so right. and they were getting the shit kicked out of them so why weren't these actually violent people who actually murdered an actual cop getting the same treatment it doesn't make sense we're putting it in the wrong place well, I mean, yeah, there's so many answers to that question. It's just, it's, it's, yeah, a lot. There's a lot of answers, as we all know. Ugh. Um, but uh, you're right. If anyone wanted to, if anyone in positions of power actually wanted to stop this, I don't think it would be that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and now I say this as like, I mean this in the micro, but I don't mean it in the mezzo or the macro, meaning right. like we should definitely use, uh, use, what do you call that? Uh, state when you do uh, sanctions. N- nonviolent. Uh, uh, yeah. Or peaceful resistance. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, or like, yeah. Or, or, or when it's when, you know, dealing with our don't attack Iran, uh, you use, the sure. other, use sanctions and shit like that. Um, right. I'm, I'm not for that kind of thing. But like when you have one dude who means you harm, you you can't be like, I'm a pacifist and I'm going to lecture you. Sometimes you have to at least show you're not scared, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's true. I wish we could. I wish I wish I knew the equation for when that when that was what we needed and when like a national peaceful resistance movement was needed, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's the hard part. I know. I say all this, and then I think, do I believe it now that it's out of my mouth? Uh, mm. I know bullies sometimes need to be punched. I guess I'll just leave yeah. it at that, and it's not scalable. You have to. Some, no. You can't just ignore bullies forever. Sometimes, sometimes you actually have to punch them once. Absolutely, and I think, like to your point, like if there had been a line of cops uh, on Wednesday who had beat the shit out of some protesters. I think that would have been a popular, uh, or I think that would have been a, an incredible visual. And I think that that makes the left stronger and it would make the right weaker. Like, I think if the right saw that, if they saw people receiving consequences for their actions, they would think twice and they would be like, Oh wait, oh, okay. Too rich for yeah, my blood. Yeah, exactly. But instead the cops were helping these fucking people down the stairs. Oh, you just froze on that me. Kind of, and it is oh, unconscionable. Go. And just, and suddenly the cops were the most pacifist hippies in the world. Why, why do they right. hire a bunch of hippies to be the Capitol police? Come on in. Well, I, I do feel somewhat for the police, like having seen the videos that came out afterwards is that they were just tossed to the fucking wolves. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're absolutely whoever, at the higher levels was preventing there being a unified police force there, like needs to fucking lose their jobs. And a few people have already, but yeah. they need that- to be banned. You know who else uh, we don't, who we haven't talked about enough. And I, I'm sorry to just fucking keep harping on this. Eric Prince, Eric Prince, the the Be- founder Betsy of DeVos's brother. What's that? Betsy DeVos. Betsy De- yes. Yes, exactly. The founder of Blackwater. Uh-huh. This guy, this guy is like Lex Luthor, the Joker. Like he needs to be in a fucking super prison in a, another dimension. Like this guy is like apparently his mercenaries were there in the crowd. Ugh. Like and like they they he's advising people about how to overthrow the government. Like fresh, this guy is fresh from their pardon. Yes, and he's he's a fucking billionaire off of private armies. Like how is that even legal? What Ugh. What jurisdiction does this guy have? You can really mercenaries are just fine. Like he's, that's a thing. He's Zod. He's Zod. Yes. Imprison him in a flat 
spinning in a flat di- uh, uh, screen TV diamond shaped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. That whew, that haunted my dreams for years. That oh, visual. Yeah. Oh, terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Just flying around in space trapped in a flat surface. Yeah. The that worst. Things probably got freaky among the three of them because they're just flying. They were there years. <laughs> I wonder, could is all you could see all that existed? Like, could they could they just play with their genitals all day below that <laughs> screen? Know, or? Right. Did they have body? Yeah. Was it like a phone booth that we we're looking down from bird's eye view? <laughs> right. <laughs> or were they just faces and hands? Yeah, it's a great mystery. <laughs> it's a, I, I, I feel some uh, erotic fiction, fan fiction coming on. <laughs> yeah, we need to ship. We need to ship this one. Um, shall we move on to uh, which would you prefer to do? I think we have time for one more segment. Uh, do you want to do true daddy confessions or fatherly advice? Oh, let's do true daddy confessions. This will be a dark episode. Okay. One, two, three. Oh no! What's daddy been? Thinking, oh no, what's daddy been drinking? True daddy confessions. <laughs> I think we already have an episode called the dark episode, so. Um, the d- Yeah, the also dark. This is uh, even darker. We've entered the also dark. <laughs> the also dark. Um, what What is your true daddy confession, Brendan? Uh, I am the dad. I am the parent that is like, watch out, watch it. Don't burn your hands on that rope. Uh, mm. I am the. I, this, I hate this about myself. Like, did you, I'm sure we've talked about this on the air. The um, the the person who found Mick Jagger's son's Instagram and then uh, Mick and then found Mick Jagger's comments on his son's Instagram. Have you seen this? <laughs> No, it sounds amazing. It's great because it's Mick Jagger, the coolest man alive that ever lived, is like a total dad of to his so like his son will be uh st- opposing with his pals on at the on the beach and the comment from Mick Jagger himself is like don't get your shoes wet exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, amazing. <laughs> Which is hilarious. But in any case, I like so yesterday we're on this hike. It was great. Up the two on the thing with the uh, this Hoyt Mountain Road is this great hike, blah blah. And um, there are all these uh, uh, gullies from the rain, and they've built all these metal uh, slide things for the rainwater to slide down the gully so there's no more erosion, so the mountains don't collapse or some bullshit. And okay. they all are a little terrifying. Like you're walking on the road on along this fire road, and then there's this metal slide, like a water park slide, that just shoots down the mountain. That is intended to collect all the rainwater on the road, blah, 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 you know. But, like, if you jump down on one of these things, you would plummet to your death instantly. And they're just there. Like, don't don't fall, you know. Wow. And so, okay. Uh, and there are all these, like, on this thing, there are a lot of cliffs. And I just get totally haunted because I am the product of, like, a uh, – I just – there's so much abandonment complex that runs in my family that I am just, like, I'm all abandonment all the time. And so – Oscar walked close to one. He's seven. He's totally agile. He's always been a coordinated kid. And he walks towards the edge of one to look down. And I was like, that, 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 like that. Right. And, I, and then, right. and, and, and even Emily got on my case. She's like, dude, he's just, he just wants to look. And I was like, I know, I know. I'm sorry. And then Oscar, this is when he turned to me and he was like, you are ruining my childhood. <laughs> 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 yeah, shut up, Dad. Shut up, Dad. I know, and I'm like, shut up to myself because, like, even if he did fall, he'd grab a branch, he'd slice his arm, and then uh, it would be a good story, you know. Bob's uh, your uncle, yeah. And uh, but instead, I get all freaked out, and he's like climbing up this rope, and I was like, don't put your hands on the rope, and I just like, I can't believe this shit comes out of my mouth. Right. I am uh, a worry wart, scaredy cat, uh, don't get hurt kind of dad, and it's dry- and I'm gonna, you know, what I'm gonna turn him into a fucking what? hang gliding instructor. <laughs> or uh um what is that the kid who who raped a girl and got off because he was too rich or something brock turner yeah yeah what was the what was the case what oh, was, or what, oh inf- what they call? influenza or no affluenza Af- affluenza yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Oh. yeah you're gonna have a you're gonna have a kid who never takes responsibility for his actions well lucky for him you know we're piss poor so that helps <laughs> that's good yeah um Man, yeah, that's a that's that's a hard that's a hard thing uh, to have to admit about yourself. 
you do not want you you, like you you want to be a free range parent but it's fucking dangerous age man that's like my my daughter there have been uh some shootings in altadena recently like the other day some guy went around for like three hours and just shot a bunch of people are you kidding i am not kidding i mean it was uh, they're they're saying it was gang it was all targeted it was like he went to like it was a gang thing. He went to specific people's houses and shot them. But for like, still for like three hours, this guy's just driving around and like shooting at people, you oh know? Oh my God. Were you guys all sheltering in place? Was it that kind of thing? I didn't even know what was going on. I didn't hear about it until afterwards. Wow. But um, that happened. And then, and, and like Hazel wanted to walk to the park with her friend by herself. She's 10 years old. And I, I love it. I, that's great. Like, I, I would totally be into that. But I'm just like, shit's going down around us, man. Like, I'm not worried about kidnappers. I'm worried about people just shooting randomly at yeah. people on the street. You know well, what I mean? Or even Instagramming while they're driving. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. There's just so many crazy things to be afraid of right now that aren't, aren't, that are that are possible you know yeah and you know what my you know my mom t- told me recently she was like i used to leave my house grab my friend across the street and then we would walk to the park and our parents would have no idea where we were and we'd go we'd leave in the morning and we'd come back for dinner and i was like how well how old were you and she was like four jesus <laughs> right <laughs> that's what it was like in the 50s yeah well, but then, then what happened? The printing press came along, and it was chaos. The printing press, and like, if it bleeds, it leads. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I, I I feel you on that. I've definitely there are certain, and as they get older, like I'm sure there, the like that lessens about certain things, right? Like, like there are things that Hazel does all on her own that I don't even think about anymore that I would have flipped out about like five years ago. Uh huh. Right. So it goes away. You haven't ruined his childhood yet. Okay, I'm trying. But we're just we're just too on top of each other, man. It's like everyone's ruining everyone's everything. You should have been like, you're ruining my adulthood. <laughs> right, I know. I know it's true. <laughs> like uh, no uh, answer. Um my true daddy confession is that I I felt like after this returning to our anxiety conversation from earlier, I felt like during this break, it was a two week break. My my company was like so generous. We had I had three weekends and two straight work weeks. Fantastic. Off. So much time. But like the minute it started, I was just thinking about how I had how how many fewer hours I had left of vacation. Mm-hmm. Like my entire <laughs> vacation was just spent like, oh, this will be over soon. Oh, it's like school all over again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Except like there's no I couldn't I couldn't like I, I wasn't. It wasn't like letting go of anything. I think it was like it was like all of the sort of tension that we've just kept in our bodies for the last four years and the last like like 10 months specifically, like it just came flooding into my body the minute I had a chance to breathe, you uh-huh. know? So I was just in this 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 like state of just like kind of like mild depression and anxiety the entire time. And I just like realized during that time, like two and a half weeks or, you know, almost like, yeah, whatever, two weeks, nothing to do except be at home, hang out with my family. And I just don't have any energy to do the dad things right now. Like, Mm -hmm. like Eli doesn't have anyone like Hazel has friends her age. She can like do talk to online. Like she's actually is having like, she has like a lot of like outdoor play dates with, with these two kids that we're sort of in a bubble with. But like Eli has nothing and he just needs someone to play with all the time. And I'm sure you have that with Oscar being mm-hmm. a single child where you're just like, I'm just like, I always I pictured myself as being the fun dad. Like I, 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 and I enjoy kids. I enjoy being around them. I was looking forward to having kids so that I could play with them and, and do imagination games and, and be creative. And I just like, it comes to me. Like I see him coming toward me with a fucking stuffed animal. And I'm just like, Oh shit, <laughs> here comes trouble. <laughs> Well, this is, I know, but you're basing this on the Rockwellian image image of a non-apocalyptic time too, you know? I mean, it's true. There's, we are, it is the fucking apocalypse. 
And yeah. it is so hard to, yeah, to be present and be like, well, yeah, let's let's play Planko together. Why not? Right. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's it's so hard not to have a bunch of shit on your mind uh, in this day and age when they're trying to be innocent. And God bless them. They should be allowed to be. Yes, exactly. There's just, yeah, there's too much. It's like I can't shut off everything else that's happening in the world. Like, it's just always there. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Like, biting at me, nagging at me. Like, there's always another world to zone out to on my phone. And I'm just like... Fucking stop, stop, stop it all. Stop the world. I want to get off, Brendan. I, I uh, never watched The Walking Dead, but I assume several episodes. I'm, sh I'm sure there's a father and son relationship among the non-zombies. And I'm sure there was a couple episodes where the son was like, but dad, can't we just play checkers? And the dad is probably <laughs> like, all right, son. Let's play right. checkers. And they're playing with like human fingers as pieces or whatever. And it's like <laughs> this heartwarming moment. But we know and the dad knows that the zombies are still coming or running. And yep. uh, and so it is in the context of the, of a zombie apocalypse that they're playing checkers and ultimately a little, you know, uh, poignant that they're like, sure. wow, there was much, there was once a simpler time before zombies when we could actually play checkers and enjoy it. And the dad knows that, but the son doesn't or whatever. Roll credits. I'm sure that right. ends like nine of the episodes of that show. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, that's what we're dealing with now. We are in a zombie apocalypse. The zombies literally were just like climbing the steps of the Capitol. And yes. so how are we supposed to play human finger chess or uh, checkers with our kid without thinking about that? That's right. Yeah, exactly. Just, just, I, I just want to play a normal game of human finger checkers. <laughs> you know, well, you like, can like we used and to. Larf. Yeah, and have a, yeah. So, a sodi pop. I know. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even eat human flesh anymore without thinking about all this shit happening oh. around me. Yeah, now there's all these labeling laws like this was once a human. Shut up. I'm trying to oh, eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A genetically modified human flesh. <laughs> yes, we bred break. them without heads, so you can eat them <laughs> with, <laughs> with a clean conscience. <laughs> uh, Soylent. <laughs> Um, fuck man. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, it's, you're right. It's, you're right. It's there's, there's no precedent for it. And there's no, there's no, with all of this connection, seemingly this constant 24 hour connection, seemingly available at our fingertips. I feel so much less connected to everyone during the period of time when we need to band together and support each other the most. Right. You know, I'll tell you exactly why, you know why? Because why? everything that is true is also its own opposite. Mm, say more. There's nothing but irony in the world. Like that. Like at the moment, time of the most connection, most possible connection, we feel the least connected. Those are the only actual truth truths that exist in the world, is mm. these things where uh, everything is self-contradictory. Mm. Uh, ironically self-contradictory. Um like uh, it, it's like the shirk. Speaking of Sh Clay Shirky again, the Shirky principle that institutions will perpetuate the problems to which they are the solution. Sure, uh, those are the only Ooh, actual good. truths we have for us. Parenting in this day and age, uh, uh, wholesome parenting uh, is not. I can't think of it, but is not possible because something, something, something about wholesome. I don't know. Uh, give me till next week, and I'll come up with whatever this version of the truth, this ironic paradox truth, is about parenting. I would love to hear it. We'll be waiting for that. We'll be excitedly waiting for that. Excellent. Tune in that next could, week. <laughs> that could be an and I challenge thee. I challenge thee. Oh yeah. To define to define parenting in our times, Brendan. Yes, right. A time uh, 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 where it probably has to do with the way work creeps into our lives. You know, where yes. work is the mo where the time where we are, we can be the most compartmentalized, leads to the least wholeness. What? No, that mm. that is mm. not that is not ironic. Anyway, no, I'll figure it out. Well, there is some you're, when you're talking about work, though. There is definitely this thing where it's like it, it it's it, it it's hard to like for those of us who are trying to live in reality. It, it's hard to feel like there is a reality because you get paid to go into another room and like spend like what are we getting paid for right now like i mean i'm doing work but it's like a lot of it is meetings so a lot of it is me sitting here it's me just like handing out my my time my life mm -hmm. i'm giving away my 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 mind space 
you know, I'm getting, that's, that's part of, that's about half of what I'm getting paid for is just giving my mind space away to my company. Right. And then the other half is creating things that I don't know if they have a value or a purpose. Oof. And it's just like the, and, and you're doing it all in your home. So it's not even like you, you can't like keep up the illusion that like, yes, well, of course I have, I have gone to the office and I have performed the office tasks. It's just like, right. You're like, it's like an on off switch obligation, no obligation, you and know, like I'm yeah. flipping the obligation switch on right now. That's what my, that's what I'm doing today. And it reveals, I think, I mean, there's a, I, I just started watch, watching Marvelous Miss Maisel, which is quite delightful. And her mm-hmm. husband has this, has the Mad Men office and like the Donnie Draper corner office thing. And he's like, and he, and in one of the early episodes, he's like, I don't know what I do. I go, I shuffle paper, I have meetings and then I leave, you know? And so right. it, it reveals the hollow, the hollowness of sort of white collar jobs as being this sort of construct that didn't, sure. that really we're all just sitting on top of the nation's wealth not really doing anything, but building a structure in which we leave our house and come home and feel and have a title, you know, but didn't yes. really do anything. And that's why and meetings were a brilliant invention because they could fill up the time so that no one would notice how little anyone ever anyone actually does yes. anything. And then email yes. filled up the other half of that. So you're either emailing or in meetings. And then are you doing anything? Uh, not really. I mean, not really. Right. Plumbers do things, but the rest of us don't. Right. But now emails and, and Slack and all these other types of uh, uh, of conversation, that's not even considered the job. That's like the fun or that's like the, the, the necessary connection that one must have to do to do the job. So I never know. Like I fill out a timesheet every day and I'm always like, I mean, I probably spent two hours on Slack today just like saying thank you. <laughs> and you know <laughs> like right. a- asking for direction to something like is that work is that helping the country is right. that moving us forward and are these billable hours to clients that's why you're filling out a timesheet is that the idea uh more that it's just like a way of it's more for internal recording purposes so we're like okay this is how much this is how long this task takes so this is how much time will allot to it next Oh, I Next see. Next time. And so, and is there a line item for just fucking talking to you people? <laughs> no, no, there isn't. There needs to be. Yeah. There because totally that, needs to be like a line 70% item. That's like 70% of everybody's job. Yeah, exactly. Like checking the news, answering emails. My job yeah. at Fox that I had for three years, I think I just answered emails. That's all I did. And it took, and it, no one told me what to do. I got there and I sat at the desk and for, and three months went by and no one told me. And eventually I started getting emails that I sort of vaguely <laughs> knew the answer to. And so I was like, oh, I think John has it sent. Right, right. And, whatever. And that became my, and then the, some version of that became my job for three years. And then I was like, wow, I'm three years older and I haven't wow. seen, I have not seen the sun in three years. <laughs> and you I never quit. like, you never physically touched anything. You just held information. Was that your job? Yeah, I mean, I ushered, I ushered along, you know, uh, motion graphics projects. So okay. I, I, I would become aware that they were needed, and then uh-huh. I would explain to someone who could create a little QuickTime asset that it needed to include certain things, and then they would be like, "It's in the G folder or whatever the fuck," and I'd be like, "Okay, thanks," and then I drag that from one folder to the other, and then you know, right. that's an honest day's okay. work. Because you're a traffic manager, is that correct? Traffic manager, but it's like it could have been. I did. I automated it in the first two weeks I was there, and then I literally had nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> traffic manager. Can you imagine a job l- more l- more suited to our times? Exactly. 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 Yet, I mean, here it comes. The irrelevant class is coming. We are all yeah. irrelevant, and we and are. What We're, are we yeah. going to do? This is this whole working at home thing is revealing it. What are yeah. we doing? We are all the people. We are all the woman sitting in front of the switchboard and pulling out one cable and putting it into another right. hole. Right. Like that's exactly. that's what we're all doing right now. And all of it is going to go away. Yeah. And what happened to her? What happened to her? Why? Ha- yeah. She, where, where is she at? What, what? She's probably ended up a meth addict. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or probably a Christian fundamentalist. She learned how to play organ and now plays in the mega church. <laughs> I'm sure. Do you think somewhere in the bowels of AT and T there are still people doing that? Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> that would be kind of awesome, actually. And they're Old all sweaty. operators. 
They're the all... last, the last operator. That's an amazing movie, actually. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. Right when they come for the last operator, and they like they they have a standoff with guns. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I love it. Ugh. Um. All right. Well, that's all I got for you this week, Brendan. It's been a dark, dark period in our nation's uh, history. In our nation's history, and I apologize to our listeners if we got a little dark this week as well. But I'm, I'm so exhausted living through history books. I don't want to be in a history book anymore. No, no. Just what? What's what? What are the lost days like? What is? What does no one talk about anymore? Like the the 90s. The 90s were fun. No yeah, one, 90s man. Like no I, one's the, pissed I, about. All the I 90s. cared about was like how Third Eye Blind ruined music. That was the capital yeah. storming of the 90s. Oh yeah, that's what. Yeah, we were we were like listening to Stone Temple Pilots and being like, "Is this a bridge too far?" That was. <laughs> yeah, what does he mean by dogs smell her? What does that mean? <laughs> what is this? Is this grunge? Is grunge dead? <laughs> I don't know. All uh, right, yes. man. Well, Jeffrey, it's always giggles. Yes, uh, you as well. I'm so sorry to hear about all of your health issues, and but we'll we'll conquer them this year. We're oh well, I'm in them. now. I'm in denial, so I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> Good, stay there. Don't okay. leave denial. No, I shot. <laughs> okay. All right, man. I'll all talk right. to you next week. Good night. Good night. Damn!